Greetings. This is Arvette McLean of Speak the Universe Listens. Change your thoughts, change your life. Step into the bigness of you. Greetings, and welcome to today's episode of Speak the Universe Listen. And today's topic is Imagine Your Possibilities. And I have Rodney, Stephen, and Teron joining hey. me today. How are you guys? Good, good. great. Good. So I actually want to talk about this topic because I just recently released my new children's book. Um, and it is called At Least a Million Ways. Tavra Imagines Her Possibilities. Thank you. And so, um, one of the questions, what I want to start with is at the end of the book. Um, so, just to give you all a brief synopsis, Tavra actually um, has an injury and which threatens to keep her from doing what she wanted to do, which was run a race. She ends up imagining herself running this race and so she learns that she has to see herself doing this race see her um feel herself doing the race and have fun so that was the instruction see feel and have fun and then do this over and over again and so the question that i have is do you think at the end of the you know on race day do you think that she won the race yes I think she won it well before race day. I think she won the race the minute she started seeing, having fun. And why am I blanking on the second one? Feeling. Feeling. There we go. The minute she started doing that, I think she won the race. Honestly, I think it was once she put her mind there, then it's automatically going to be done. Like once she started envisioning herself, feeling how it feels to win that race, and then really believing that she's going to win that race, it's already done. All you got to do now is just, I guess. The walkthrough. That's what I would call it. <laughs> the walkthrough. <laughs> I think so. Uh, the main thing what I like what uh, Teron was saying is just like all you got to do is basically uh, believe and then see it. And if you can do those main two things, then and I'm just thinking about scenarios in my own life. I'm like, well, I believe and I've seen it for myself. And I'm like, okay, and it happened. You know, it was like a, a piece of cake, you know. So, um, yeah, for the most part, imagine it, your imagination, uh, for me, though, I think it just can take you a lot of places. And if you don't really tap into it as much as they need to. Because when people think of the word imagination, they think of something that's not real. Right. Or something that's far fetched, but it ain't, you know, reality or, you know, the case may be. But it's really um, just visualizing, you know, and, and if you can see it, then it can come true, mm -hmm. I feel like. Yeah, I feel like imagination is the key to creation. And I think, we, like you say, we mm -hmm. typically don't tap into it. And so often, maybe, like in the story, she had a certain way that she was going to go about doing this race. She was going to practice, practice, practice. And then when that was not an option for her, it was like, well, then I can't win. And I think we do that so often. Like, I was going to do this job and get this money from this place. But then as soon as I got the money, you know, my sister had to borrow the money from me. And she, you know, so now I can't do what 
I wanted to do. And, and it just stops us in our track. Mm -hmm. It's like everything that's around us, someone envisioned it first. It's like I, I love when you use that example about the the uh, potential for electricity was always here, you know, <laughs> but somebody you know had to visualize doing it, and so I think it's it just show you that uh, anything is possible if if you with your imagination. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, what I was going to say is what I think what usually happens is when people hear imagination, it's odd because growing up, you're taught to use it a bunch. And I don't know at what point in life that we all just forget it or lose it. But I feel like I remember every child having a very vivid imagination. It's like we come into the world with this imagination. We come into the world knowing that everything is possible. But it's like as we grow, for some reason, we're losing it. And exactly. I think if we stop that and instead we start focusing on growing it more, then more things become possible instead of living in a position of lack or living in a limited area or a limited lifestyle. To piggyback off what you're saying, it's like they tell us as kids, you can be anything, you can, you can be this, you can be that. Right. But everything from there, they show us the limits. No. It shows the opposite it's of the that. Opposite of that. You know, the opposite of why you can't do that. Right. Or, oh, you know, you need to do X, Y, Z in order right. to do that. Right. Yeah. And I actually like the book, the title of your book too, um, "A Million Ways," because it's funny. I remember when I was in high school, I would always tell my mom, "Like, yeah, you know what? They are right. You could be whatever you want to be when you grow up." I was like, "Cause you know, if I want to be a Power Ranger, all I gotta do is go to Party City and buy a costume." <laughs> Just another way to do it. <laughs> well, yeah, I like the um, title of the book, too, but that's something that I always say to myself. That's something I remind myself of all the time because so often, you know, things don't work the way you want it to work or whatever, and then you'd be like, I don't know how to do it. I can't do that or whatever. That I tried this and it didn't work or whatever, and so instead of me giving up with that, and I'd be like, I know it's at least a million ways this can be done. And I just gotta come up with one more. Mm -hmm. one more. <laughs> and so then it's like, when you take the time to think of something else, all of these possibilities start coming. You'd be like, oh, I could do this, I could do this, I could do this, and it just rolls in. <laughs> right. And you would be surprised how one little simple question can open up your mind to a, a million possibilities. Mm -hmm. Like the question of, what do you want? Mm -hmm. yeah. oh, <laughs> if, I, if it ain't a limit on what I want, right. now I want this, 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 mm -hmm. I want all of this. Right. You know, so it's like, we put, limit on our, we put limits on ourselves when we don't use our imagination. And then what you're saying, like, even with that question, you know, um, what is it that you want? And when you actually talking to somebody and you ask that question, you ever ran into some individuals where they have to sit back and they have to pause and they have to really put some thought into mm -hmm. it, right? And they don't really uh, tap into their imagination because what you said, they limit this. They, they're sort of, they can only see the 3D, you know, they only, they can't go so far. So you say, well, what is it that you want? You know, they probably say the basics, well, a car, I want a house, you know. I want a couple of dollars in my bank account, you know. And then you ask questions like, what do you want? <laughs> like, well, what do you really want? So um, with, with that imagination, I think, uh, when, you, when somebody really just go for it, just dream, just really just go big on it, you know, and realize that it's like beyond possible. Because I had situations as well, um, even with uh, my job, right? What I do with my business, and, you know, my first instinct was, all right, well, how how am I going to build clientele? My vision was, okay, it's gonna be easy because you know I already have some people already word of mouth, mm -hmm. word of mouth. So I already know, like I just I just seen it like every day. I'm making money. Some way, somehow, every day I'm getting clientele, right? That was my vision. And 
my vision didn't go that way at first, right? It didn't go that way at first, but it didn't uh, take away from me not continuously thinking like that. Mm -hmm. Then over time, it was like, okay, now I, I get more work. <laughs> As the boy in the hands, like, okay, now I have to, I have to sort of slow myself down just a little bit, you know. But um, I think that when people just get out the mindset of like, stop being so scared of, you know, imagining what, what it is that you really want, and just say, hey, all right, this is what I want. And who cares if it sounds crazy? Everybody has something that they think about. It might sound crazy to somebody, but who's to say that's impossible? Yeah, so a lot of times people think, well, if I'm imagining this, I'm just a dreamer. And, yeah. You know, people don't want to be labeled as a dreamer. And what's the purpose in having this dream if it's never going to come true? And, mm -hmm. and you know, that type of thing. And um, then you also have people say, well, I do imagine that it just didn't happen. <laughs> you know? <laughs> and I just wanted to comment on that because when we imagine, we still are oftentimes we're not doing the third part, which is have fun, mm -hmm. right? So we're still imagining from a place of, I don't have it. Mm -hmm. right. <laughs> right. So even though you're imagining it, and you might even be in a place of trying to feel the thing, but you also have that vibration of, I don't have it. Mm -hmm. And so you want to really be in a space of where you feel like you have it right now. Like your imagination is so real and yummy. Like. You just love being in that place. You know, it doesn't matter if you have it or not because you're having the experience of it. You're having the feeling of it. And um, when you feel that and it's not mixed in with another vibration of, but I don't have it yet. Because <laughs> then if, if you're vibrating, but I don't have it yet, then you're going to keep recreating that, that you don't have it yet. And so you want to make sure when you're doing your feeling and seeing it, that you're enjoying it and it's happening as if it's right now, not something that, that you, don't, you have. don't have, something that you're going to get in the future, you know, that type of thing. You want to mm -hmm. feel it right now. And then uh, just think about what you said. Uh, it's almost like, let's say for instance, you have a, it's, it's a track stop. And track stop know for a fact guaranteed that when they on that field they're gonna win there's no no ifs and it's no buts about it they already seen it they envisioned it for themselves and they actually they, they win so i think about that too um just uh even in my life with certain things as to where say it's um something that i'm good at doing you, know, you can't tell me yeah, it's like nobody, nobody can tell me that I can't do this particular thing right here. So, um, yeah, I would say if anything, though, um, that's one of the big things: believing, envisioning, just doing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think your imagination has to be big in order. Yeah, I think your imagination has to be big in order to accomplish your real goals and your real dreams. I don't. You can't, I don't think you can accomplish your dreams by having a lack of imagination because then you're going to limit yourself and you're never going to get there. So even, you might even get to like the dream that you think is a dream, but it's like, that's just the stepping stool for the dream. Mm -hmm. Because now, once you're there, you're like, all right, well, I'm here. Now I can see bigger. And that's when you start saying like, oh, this is my real dream. Mm -hmm. This right. was just a step I felt like I needed to take to get to it. So your imagination, you need it. I keep in mind that too, like, all the things that we have like in this world now that we just look at and we be like, wow, from technology to all these inventions, it's like somebody had to think about that. Somebody had it to have a wild and crazy imagination in order for it to like actually, you know, to manifest it into reality. So that, that just goes to show me there's nothing that's impossible. Right. Yeah. And when, when you tap into that imagination, your eyes get wide. <laughs> oh, all this out here? All this is possible. Right. I think this was said at the book um, launch, um, but there's a quote that keeps coming to my mind that uh, goes, I, I might butcher this, but I think it goes, God has as many ways as there are stars. And wherever I heard of it, it just yeah. stuck, and I was like, man, that is, whew, 
Yeah, it hit. <laughs> yeah, because you think, start thinking about all the stars. You're like, wait a minute. Don't nobody know how many stars there is. And then there's constantly stars being born and created. There's right. new ways constantly being born and created. It's just a perfect one. <laughs> I just think like imagination. Um, when it comes to my daughter, you know, I'm just trying to keep her imagination going. You know, just you know, just dreaming big, you know, not thinking small, like thinking outside the box. Because um, I remember, like, for me when I was younger, I had an imagination. But what you were saying, you start off with this huge imagination, and then over time, it's like mm -hmm. you start you lose it a little bit. It start I, I just thought of something. What's that? So at my grandma house, uh -huh. it's a it's a picture of me. It's a baby picture of me. Right. And so when I was a kid, I wrote a bunch of stuff I, I wanted to be when I when I got older. Uh -huh. And we put it in the back of that picture. All right. And it's just crazy. Like I had everything. Like boxer, astronaut, L doctor, <laughs> everything, everything on there. Like uh -huh. it was just crazy and. You know, like we said, as time go by, that faded. Like that imagination that I had then, when I wrote that letter and put it in the back of my picture, faded now. Mm -hmm. We start thinking what seems logical, what right. do I think mm -hmm. I can What do. makes sense. Yeah. yeah. Makes sense. And really, whatever you think makes sense, makes sense. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and that's right. so true, because some people think it makes sense to be an astronaut. Right, yeah. <laughs> some people, that's just far-fetched. Wow, I got to go find that. Cause I forgot all about that until really? just now. I really did. And well, well, I know it's in there. Park City and make your astronaut too. <laughs> <laughs> I remember uh, when I was younger, like my imagination, my thing that I wanted to do when I got older was be an architect. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I, don't know, I don't know why. It's the only reason. Uh, I don't even know what that is. An architect? Oh, yeah, you do. That's, that's, yeah, you I probably do, but can't. Person that designs buildings. See, I thought that was an engineer. Uh, the engineers do the same thing, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, but they pretty much blue, have a blueprint. They, they, they are like the masterminds behind the whole structure. Design, you know, right, right. right. The only reason why I think is because you know back then I used to love to draw. I got my mat, my mind was just like, uh, I like to figure things out, you know, how it works and so forth, and then. Time goes on, you know. <laughs> but now it's almost like I'm sort of getting my, you know, getting my imagination back, stepping outside the comfort zone, dreaming big, thinking big. And, uh, so it's it's almost like when you get to a certain step in on your journey, the things like when it comes to imagination, it seems like it slowly come back to you. Mm -hmm. Slowly, it's like you get to a point as to where you you get uh, that light bulb goes off, and then when it goes off, it's like okay, and then now, now yeah. <laughs> you start to revisit it a little bit. You got me over there thinking about uh, like when I was a kid, I was yeah. deemed to be smart. Like I was, really? yeah, like <laughs> I said, it. Yeah, I said yeah. He's all yeah. really. <laughs> No, really, like, I skipped the grade and everything. Like, I was deemed to be so smart, and, like, um, I remember, I like, my cousin was in an older grade. I used yeah. to want to do her math, and, mm -hmm. and, like, you know, when she's struggling with homework, I want to figure it out. Like, you know, <laughs> like, just, but I just, you know, then as I got older, I started not liking school. Mm -hmm. And it's like... But it was the story I was telling myself, like, I don't like school or, you know, mm -hmm. and I don't know where I was going with this stuff yet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 I was terrible in school. You said you was, <laughs> <laughs> I was, I was terrible back then, man. I ain't gonna say I was terrible, I just think that, you know, I really wasn't into school, mm -hmm. so I really didn't do as well until I got older, you know, like about 18 or so. Yeah, it's yeah. Got no choice. <laughs> but that's, you know, like you said, that's the story you told yourself. 
and everything is the story you tell yourself. Like you told yourself you're not good in school. You told yourself, right. I don't know, you told yourself you don't like school mm-hmm. or whatever. We all have stories that we tell ourselves and they often are stories that will cause us to collapse, cause us to shrink, cause us to live in our limitations and, mm-hmm. and don't allow us to, you know, and we'll always think there's a reason why we can't, mm-hmm. you know, and then we, we pay more attention to why we can't do it and don't give any credence to why we can do it or um you don't even really have to know how to do it but you just put it out there like this is what i want this is what i would love this is you know and then things will just ideals will pop into your head things will just magically open up but as long as you say i can't then you can't there's no avenues you know but the minute you say i can i just need to you know think about it mm-hmm. then all of a sudden so and and this um past weekend my husband was like um he wanted some ice cream because it was vanilla ice cream in the house and so he's like oh i want some ice cream i'm like well you you could have had the vanilla ice cream so he's like i don't like vanilla ice cream and i was like yes you do and he's like no i don't you know i need some stuff on it you know and i was like okay well you had some cherry pie you could have put some cherries on it right. he's like oh yeah that's true bananas in there and um, I was like some peanut butter and he said oh I could have made a gym dandy and so then he was like and there's some pineapples in the cabinet and we got those Hershey bars and we could just melt the Hershey on oh so he's like oh yeah I could have had a good but what was funny about that right. to me is just how easy like if you just start mm-hmm. something you just imagine, you just see that everything is already around you. It's just like so many ideals. And like a lot of times um, people do that at work. They have like, um, I can't even think what it's called. I haven't worked it so long. <laughs> I can't even remember this stuff. But you know, like they would have discuss meetings where you do brainstorming sessions right. and stuff. And it's like if it was just you by yourself, you might have came up with one or two ideals. But when it's a group of people and then you will say something and that'll make me remember something and think of something and then all of a sudden you got this whole page you know of all these possibilities where before it was like one or two ideas so forth and then eventually it's like everybody's a little dead but then they wake up and they're like oh yeah well yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think about it like that well you know let's try this or try that but yeah I think my imagination is one that actually I'm, I, I can notice it coming back uh-huh. like even when I look at the things that I do or the things around me like I remember I would always say in my mind, I was never saying this out loud, man, I want to live like a rap video one day. I want to live like a rap video one day. And then I started like just reflecting. This is actually crazy. I was sitting back on my laptop the other day looking at old videos from a vacation that we had taken. I was like, man, I could put together a whole little rap video right here. (laughs) So it was like my imagination was coming back and I didn't even notice it, but I was doing one thing and that was just leading to another thing, leading to another thing, leading to another thing. And now here I am living another dream that I had that I didn't even realize I had lived. <laughs> a lot of times um, when we do tap into our imagination, because you say that yours is coming back, um, like a lot of times if somebody says, um, what would you imagine? What What is your biggest imagination for yourself? Like a lot of times you would come up with stuff like, oh, you know, I'll you know, be a millionaire and i have, you know, this property and mm-hmm. I'll you know right. do these things I fly around the world and so forth and so on and and then some kind of way I just realized wow that's very limited mm-hmm. you know like I was like what is it something higher than that <laughs> you know and then envisioning myself into that higher space that's beyond having this and having that and having this and having that. So have you all ever given that any thought? Like if, if you, if you, let's just say if you were a Christ, mm-hmm. how would you walk the world? Like what would 
you want it to look like? I would have no limits. There's, there's no <laughs> limits to, I mean, how would I want it to look like? Well, I can't really say how I want it to look like, really, because then if I say what I want it to look like, would I be placing a limit on it? On how I want it to look like? Yeah, but at the same time, uh, you're taking, removing the old limit mm -hmm. and you're going up. I got it. <laughs> I got it. Yeah, because, you know, there's, you know, a lot of times when we think of Christ, we think of Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. but yeah. there's been other Christ, you know, such as the Buddha or whatever. Um, so, like, like if you were living in your highest state, like, what would your highest state be? And, like, the different, I guess, Christ, when you really think, look at the definition of what Christ wow. means, the different um, Christ, they focused on different things. Like, they had different talents. They had different ways of loving, mm -hmm. different ways of showing up on the earth. Like, you know, what, what would that look like? What would I want? Not If I step into my Christ-like state, what would that be? I could just go on, you know. <laughs> um, everything, I think, I would be like, just in a, I wouldn't even know what worry is. No more. I wouldn't even know what, what uh, having a bad day is. Like, if somebody was to say that, that would be like something foreign to me. Like, well, I need you to explain that to me. What is a bad day? I, I don't know, you know. <laughs> So uh, yeah, I would just be living, living my best, best life, you know, and I would have nothing to complain about. And that's something that I always say. Like anytime somebody asks me, uh, "Well, how you doing?" I always say I can't complain <laughs> because I honestly can't. Because it always reminds me, like, what is it that I have to complain about? You know. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, we actually been talking about this topic for a long time. <laughs> Got <laughs> <laughs> our imaginations going. <laughs> yes, it does. All right, so we're going to go ahead and close this out with um, anybody have a closing statement about imagination, possibilities, potentialities? In the words of the great Kevin Garnett, anything is possible. <laughs> <laughs> My man. All right, we'll go out with that. So thank you guys for joining us. Look forward to seeing you again next week. Until then, I'm Ardette. And stay with me. Right. I'm Teron. Okay. Alright. I'm back. Yeah. 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 Y